Hi, I'm Lindsay and I'm a recruitment evangelist here at Indeed. When you think about Indeed as an organization, everyone that works here is very connected to our mission of I help people get jobs. Typically, I support employers that are hiring on Indeed and work with them on their recruitment strategies so that they can help people get jobs. Today, I'm going to be getting even closer, closer to that mission and educating you on how to use Indeed better so that I can help you get a job. Now, the good news is when it does come to our mission at Indeed of helping people get jobs, we're very good at it. You can see here that we're very proud to be the number one job site globally. We've got 1.5 million companies coming to Indeed to hire on our platform, and we've got 4.5 million new job listings being added to Indeed.com every single month. So it does make us a really powerful tool to help you find the job that you want. While Indeed is a great tool, we are also very conscious of the fact that it is stressful to look for a new job. Typically, when you ask people what's most important to them in life, they're going to say their family, their health, and work is also ranking at the top. And it's definitely not surprising because we spend most of our day at work. So that makes choosing the next type of work that you're going to be doing potentially one of the more stressful decisions that you can make. Change in general is difficult for people, and job searching definitely isn't any different. So today, we're going to educate you on how to use Indeed so that you're more confident in your job search, and hopefully it reduces the stress a little bit in the process. I'm going to walk you through 10 ways to use Indeed like a pro, and 10 may seem like a lot, but it'll only take about 30 minutes, and I'm going to make it quick and easy for you. So let's get started with the first tip, which is exactly that, to get started. The easiest way to start your job search is to sign up for an Indeed account. Good news is it's free and it also gives you access to Indeed's tools and resources that will help you get that job. If you want to search Indeed from your phone, I absolutely recommend downloading the free job search app, which you can find and download in the app store on your phone or tablet. You can easily search and apply for jobs right from your phone, as well as accessing other services from Indeed and guidance on your overall job search journey. This app also allows you to get updates on new jobs and receive messages from employers right from your phone. Now, once you've created that account, the next step is to create or upload your resume. The whole purpose of a resume is to prevent is to present your experience and your skills in a format that's really easy for employers to read. You can if you do have a resume created already, you can upload it to Indeed by simply clearing, clicking the upload resume button. If you don't have one, that's certainly not a problem. You can create one in five easy steps, and in that case, I'd recommend you going to Indeed 101 on Indeed's YouTube channel for more information on creating a resume. You can find that channel by going to youtube.com and searching for Indeed. That channel has a lot of great information, but I'm going to give you some quick tips to consider today. While there's definitely some room for creativity in your resume, and you should do that, Every single resume should contain a few essential items, which are listed here. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on each one of these. When you're thinking about contact information, you want to make sure that your full name is on your resume, as well as your city, your email address, and your phone number. If a resume or if an employer finds your resume, we absolutely want to make sure that they're able to contact you. Now, when it comes to educational degrees and certification, you absolutely want to showcase these. However, depending on the role or industry that you're looking at, these can vary in importance. When you're listing your work or your volunteer experience, just be mindful that you are listing your most recent experience first. And then when we look at skills, absolutely make sure that you're listing your expertise in those skills. The reason I say that, let's look at the example of if I were to say I'm fluent in Spanish, that's very different than saying I can speak Spanish conversationally. And then getting to the last point here, we want to say when I'm saying optional information, um, we want to see potentially awards you have received or your job preferences or if you have a summary, all of those would be included in those optional components. 
Once you have your resume elements, you want to be mindful of thinking like an employer. Indeed has done studies to understand how employers look at resumes. You can see here a picture of what's called gaze tracking technology, which was used in that study. If you look at the green areas where there's bigger blobs of the green, that's where more employers are spending time looking. And when you look at more of the yellow and the red, that's where employers are spending even more time looking. Now they're doing all of this in seven seconds, which is a really short time to get their intent, their attention. Now, being mindful of that, it's really important to make sure that we're formatting our resume in a way that's easy to read and really highlighting those skills and accomplishments that are going to stand out. Once you've created your resume, you can set it to public or private, and it's important to understand the differences between the two. If you set your resume to private, you can make it very easy for yourself in the future to apply to jobs. You'll be able to apply with just the click of one button instead of refilling out your work experience, etc., um, over and over again when you're applying. Now, if you set it to public, you get that same benefit, but your resume is also searchable to employers. Recruiters can search for resumes by skills, titles, industries, et cetera, and then they have a lot of refinements as well to hone in on the type of candidate that they're looking for. Now, when they are searching and find your resume, they can't see your name or contact information. What happens is they're gonna send you a message, and if you approve that communication, they'll then have access to your contact information and name. You can go to this link listed on the slide to see what that experience looks like from an employer standpoint for searching you in that database. Now, once you've done the work to put your resume on Indeed, let's just recap the benefits. A, we format it for you so it's really easy for employers to read on a desktop, a phone, or a mobile device, and it's really easy for you to download as a PDF to save to your computer or to print. It also makes it really easy to apply to jobs in just a few clicks. And again, like we mentioned, if you do list it as public, employers are able to search and find you proactively. Once you've created that account and added a resume, a great way to stand out to employers is to show your skills through assessments. Indeed has over 50 assessments that you can proactively take, and they're just short tests that were created by psychologists for a variety of different industries and skill sets. You can take these to stand out and show employers your skills in a way that your resume wouldn't necessarily be able to do. You can see here that 75% of job seekers do see assessments as a really great way to stand out to employers. Now, when you do take those assessments, you have the option to share the results on your resume for employers to see, or you can hide those results at any time. Once you've gone through the first three steps, your profile is ready to go, but we want to be conscious of making sure that you are ready to go as well. A great place to go next is Indeed's career guide. Um, that'll give you an understanding of how to start your job search because it's not necessarily always easy or the same for every individual. So that brings us to our fourth tip of using our career guide. We've consulted with career coaches, recruiters, hiring managers, product experts, and put together this guide. One example of a resource that you can find here that I love is you can get a, a wide variety of different sample resumes. It's really helpful to look at those to see how some of your peers have phrased similar experience to what you have, and you can also get a sense of industry language or internal language at certain companies. Once you've set yourself up success, for success with creating that account and getting advice on getting started, let's talk about researching companies. This is our next tip. And it's definitely one that we don't want to skip over because it can make you a lot more effective in your job search. Before you even start your job search, it's nice to research companies and get a sense of the type of organization that you want to work for. You're going to be spending a lot of time with your next employer, so it's really important to get an understanding of what type of company you want to pursue. Next, when you're searching roles and you're coming across roles that sound interesting but you've never even heard of the company, you can really easy, easily go to the company page of that employer and get an understanding of not only what they do, but also what their culture is like, what they're about, etc. 
And then the last item that, or the item where this comes in really helpful is when you're getting ready for an interview. You can, um, you can prepare really well in getting a very good understanding of what they do, what type of people they're looking for. You can even find popular interview questions that their specific hiring managers ask. Company pages have tons of great information like reviews, salaries, potential advancement opportunities, information on if they provide a really great work-life balance. And let's say you find a company that you're really excited about, you can choose to follow that company at the top right-hand side of the company page. And what's that? what that's going to do is if they post any new jobs or if they're posting any updates on their company page, you'll get weekly emails from that employer on those updates. So you've now researched your target companies for and roles. Let's get started with searching for jobs. Indeed works very similar to search engines like Google. When you come to indeed.com, you're going to see two boxes that need to be filled out, the what box and the where box. In the what box, you can type in skills or titles you're looking for or one of your target employers. And in the where box, you can put either your city, a state, or a zip code. Once you fill out those two boxes, you can either press enter or find jobs. Something to know is that what you're typing in those boxes is not case sensitive, so you can use upper or lower case letters and you're gonna see the same results. So you've clicked enter or find jobs, now you're gonna be taken to the search results page. This is just basically all the jobs that line up with your search. These jobs will have all of the terms that you included in that what box. I'll get into some more tips in just a second, but again, I would love to direct you to Indeed 101 training um, on our YouTube channel. It's gonna be a great resource for you after today. Earlier, I had mentioned that we have 25 million new jobs being added to our platform every single month. Super impressive number, but potentially a lot for you, you to sort through. We wanna make sure that you understand how to narrow down those results when too many jobs show up. Let me give you an example. If I were to type in sales in the what box and Austin in the where box, I would be shown 10,000 plus results of jobs that match up with that. However, if in that what box, instead of putting sales, I put medical sales in Austin, that's going to hone it down to 200-ish candidates. You can also use filters to narrow down and refine your results. We've got filters like salary or location, type of job, as well as quite a few others. On a desktop, you also have access to an advanced search, which is a great resource to both narrow down as well as broaden your search. What you're gonna do is right next to the Find Jobs button, there's an advanced search link you can click you're going to click on that, and again, that allows you to either narrow or broaden. Lots of job seekers do use the advanced search to exclude words. For example, let's say I wanted to find a customer success role, but I didn't want to do any sort of selling activity. So what I would do is search for that customer success role, but then in the none of these words box, I'm going to type in sales. I'm then going to see results for customer success roles that don't include selling activity within those job descriptions. Now, let's say I want to broaden my search. An example of how you could use this is, let's say I was looking for a warehouse worker role. Employers term that title differently across the board, so a great way to use this to broaden your search is to go in and in the at least one of these words box, type in warehouse worker, comma, warehouse associate, comma, material handler, comma, general labor. I'm then going to see a search results page that has roles with all of those titles as opposed to just warehouse worker titles. Sometimes it does take time to build a search that fits exactly what you're looking for. So when you do build that perfect search, you wanna make sure you keep it and have Indeed let you know when new jobs open up that have that same criteria. To do this, you're just gonna click the activate button. Then you can get alerts the day a job is posted and potentially be one of the first candidates to apply. 
you do have the option of setting these updates to either daily or weekly. When you do set them up, it is important to be selective in what type of searches you are activating. What happens is if the search is broad, you're going to be bombarded with lots and lots of roles in those search alerts on a regular basis, too many to potentially follow up with, and it may start to feel like spam. So we want to be selective in setting those up, and let's say you're getting too many that aren't a fit, you can absolutely go back into your profile and manage those saved searches and change your preferences or put them on hold at any time. For the eighth tip, this is where adding your resume to your profile comes in very handy. Once we have found jobs that we want to apply to, applying is really easy if we've done that step. When you're going through different jobs, keep an eye out for jobs that have the tag of apply with Indeed resume, apply now, or easily apply. What happens then is the resume is sent directly to the employer and you're not filling out long applications with the same information over and over again in different companies, um, websites and career sites and hiring systems. This does make applying really easy and you can potentially apply to a lot of roles really quickly. But before you do, you wanna make sure that you're making it crystal clear to those employers on why you're a great fit. Now. It is tough to know exactly what an employer is looking for that's going to make you stand out. So Indeed has done studies to look at what successful job seekers are doing and identify those trends. We did notice something that can dramatically help improve success in finding a job. And that's to make sure you're carefully considering jobs that are not only the right fit for you, but you're also the right fit for them. And then when you do find those jobs, spending the time to craft really high quality applications. This does take time, but it'll save you time in the long run because you can potentially hear from employers and get offers more quickly than just applying to everything really quickly and not spending time in customizing those applications to each specific employer. So at the end of the day, don't focus on quantity. You want to focus on quality applications. We do want to keep in mind that with the Indeed mobile app, you can do all of this from your phone. You can search, you can apply, and you can track your progress through your phone, which brings me to my next point. Once you've applied to a lot of roles, they can all start running together and it gets really difficult to track. So you could be asking the question of, have I applied to this role? Um, have I spoken with this employer? Or I'm not sure, did this employer even get back to me? The good news is you can use Indeed to stay really organized with all of this information, which brings us to our ninth tip, and that's to make Indeed your hub to track all of this activity. Going into My Jobs in your account will show you what jobs you've saved, what jobs you've applied to, which jobs you're interviewing for, um, which ones you have offers for, and my personal favorite, which company you eventually got hired at. Before we get to our final tip though, I do wanna make sure that we talk about the not so great part of job searching, waiting for a response. I think that it's similar to anyone's experience of giving someone your phone number and hoping they call, hoping they're texting, constantly checking your phone to see if you are hearing from them at all. And then as time goes on and you don't hear from this person, you start to lose confidence that they're gonna reach back out to you. So similar to that situation, waiting to hear back from an employer after you've applied to one of their roles that you're excited about, that waiting game is unfortunately an inevitable part of the process. Some organizations will send a confirmation email right away saying that they got your application. Some organizations you won't hear from at all, unfortunately. It does get frustrating and sometimes what's helpful is to think about the person on the other side that's looking at those applications. Depending on the role, some roles they may get one applicant for a day. Other roles they may get over 500, which can be really overwhelming and make it tough for them to respond to every single candidate. Not so great for you, but still regardless, it's 
you can potentially feel like you're in a black hole not hearing back from employers in this situation. And it's really important in your job search to stay confident even when you're experiencing that. One great resource that I'd recommend going to is checking out the link on this page if you're not hearing back from employers. This link will give you tips to build your confidence and stay confident in that job search. And it's also going to give you a few tips um, on how you can make your resume stand out so you are catching employers' eyes and hopefully getting higher responses in the future. Now, when employers do reach out and ask you to interview, it's not done there. It's really important to prepare for that interview. Every organization has different hiring and different interviewing processes. Indeed, it does have a lot of advice on how to prepare for interviews. Everything from interview etiquette to what to wear, how to follow up with the employer after your interview, how to explain gaps in your resume, or how to answer just some really tough questions. You can go to the link listed right here to learn more about preparing for an interview. The one part of preparing that I definitely want to talk about today is preparing for the questions. There's no way that we can know exactly what's going to be asked, but there are some popular interview questions like these. You can also refer back to their company pages and candidates that have interviewed with that employer in the past will list questions that they were asked as well. So these questions and questions that are showing up on their company page are going to be great ones to use as reference. And what we want to do is prepare like we're preparing for a test. We want to research the company, we want to prepare, and we want to practice our talking points until you feel really, really confident in your responses. Because when you're prepared, you are much more likely to stand out and leave a lasting impression to that employer, more so than your fellow candidates. And that's it. That's our top 10 tips for using Indeed Like a Pro. You can go ahead and get started and be sure to update us when you land a job. If you have made it through that job search and landed that job, here is a great place to share that story. It can also, in your job search journey, give you encouragement on the process and seeing that Indeed is helping people all over the world get jobs, and we want to do that for you too. Thank you so much for your time today, and we at Indeed wish you the best of luck in your job search.